Welcome to One Bills Light, a fresh and different look at the Bills in our daily show, One Bills Live, where we cram as much football into 40 minutes as humanly possible. Coming up, can Josh Allen really boost his completion percentage numbers into the 70s? There are a few who think it's possible. Steve is tested on the history of high completion percentage quarterbacks in our numbers game. And for Bills Camp, we weigh in with who will be first? Tee up the ball! And it's Steve Tasker who has been all over the field. Kind of unique. He was kind of a dual role player for you. Steve. A balloon. Steve. A blimp. <laughs> We're not even in the stratosphere of normalcy. And thanks for joining us here on One Bills Light, our bonus coverage of the Bills that is fresh and different from our daily show, One Bills Live, Chris Brown. And Steve Tasker with you as always. And Steve, with high expectations for the Bills in 2021, there are equally high expectations for Josh Allen. We have Bruce Feldman from Fox Sports and The Athletic, who was on our daily show this week, who did a long-form piece on Josh, and Joe Burrow for that matter, and his anticipated improvement production-wise for Josh Allen this year. What did you make of his belief that Josh could hit 72 to 75 percent completion percentage this year. That's a big number. Uh, we, have, but he's not the only one we've heard that from. Mm -hmm. Car, uh, Jordan Palmer, Car, uh, Josh's coach, thought that that was an, a logical and an expected step this year. And while that may happen, Brownie, he may go to 72, 74 percent completions. I still don't know that he's going to throw any more effectively than he did a year ago. Uh, it will depend on how the offense goes, the defense, and the what, and what teams will be able to do against the Buffalo Bills. Uh, with 17 games, it'll be easier to replicate the 4,800 he had this last year. Uh, I've said I think he could go to 5,000, and I think there'll probably be a couple of guys who do. But this, you know, th there will be some statistical things that will look not as good as last year, and there will be some that look as good. I think the guy we saw last year is who Josh is going to be going forward and what the statistics yeah. look like after. It's going to be an afterthought, whether he's around 69.2 where he was last year or whether he jumps 5% or 4% and gets up into the 73, 74. It won't be demonstrably different, but Josh is still going to be in the MVP conversation. Yeah, it's we're talking rare air here in Absolutely. terms of the completion percentage. Absolutely. This is not accomplished all that often, as we'll soon find in the numbers game when we quiz Steve. But the thing that I keep coming back to is, was last year a career year for Josh? Certainly you say it was because it was the best season he's put up, but he's only in his fourth year now. There are a lot of years to come. There may be years that surpass what he did last season, but <laughs> you look at Tom Brady's almost perfect year in 2007 when he threw for 50 touchdowns. He didn't throw for 50 touchdowns the next year or the year after that or the year after that. Um, Aaron Rodgers may not get to the same numbers that he had last year, and he's done it before, and he's won the MVP three times. Patrick Mahomes did not throw for 50 touchdowns the year after he threw 50. He threw 26. The I'll team was just as successful. Right. You know what I mean? I'll so say this, I think yeah. there is a there is a natural order of things where maybe Josh does see some numbers go down slightly, but I don't think it's going to impact the success of the team this year necessarily. Of course, then again, there's the thought they've got Emmanuel Sanders in the mix now, who is a more diversified receiver. He Beasley and Stefan Diggs and then Gabe Davis on the other side. I mean, are you kidding me? There is a multitude of options there, I, I, and I'm going to say this, too. I want to throw this in here. I think Brian Dable, he's not going to say it publicly, but going into this season, he's <laughs> pissed off. Yeah. And I think he's going to roll it up on anyone he has right. an opportunity mm -hmm. to do it against. Yeah. If he can hang 40 burgers on people, 50 burgers, he's going to do it. He is not taking his foot off the gas. They are not shortening the game. They are chucking it all over the yard. What do you think about that? I will say this about that. There's a lot of layers to this. You're right. Uh, the Chiefs, the year after they got to the championship game where, when Mahomes em emerged onto the scene, was MVP, and they lost in the Super Bowl, uh, or they lost in the AFC championship game. Then they went the next year and, and got to the Super Bowl and won it. 
he won the Super Bowl in a year that was a down year for him. They won games different ways, and here's why. Teams will do what they can to make the Bills do something different, to beat them left-handed. But this is a Bills team, unlike the Aaron Rodgers teams that you spoke about and unlike the Tom Brady teams you spoke about, this Bills team, in large measure, could be better than it was around Josh this could be. year. They're, they're, they did not take a step back. John Brown, yes, but Emmanuel Sanders in. Uh, the offensive line brought in a ton of guys that are going to compete to play. This offensive line will play better because of that competition and because of the weeding out process. The defense has been refurbished up front. They're going to play better. So what will happen is the, gr- the team will get better around Josh, and he there will never be a time when they get into the third – no, I'm not saying never. There won't be as many times when they get into the third and fourth quarter where they're sweating it. Josh is not going to be throwing deep – uh, to Stephon Diggs in the corner of the Arizona game to come back and beat them, or at least put them ahead with 24 seconds before the Hail Murray. They may be comfortably ahead. They're not. Yes, they're not going to be in a position where Josh has to come back against the L.A. Rams and throw a touchdown with nine seconds left in the back of the end zone to Tyler Croft. They're not going to be in a position where you know they have to do that late in games. Now, having said that, because the team's going to play better around him. And teams are going to do things against them like they did against Mahomes and Tyreek Hill and Travis yep. Kelsey the year they went to the Super Bowl. But they're going to win games. Now, ha- having said that, you're right. I don't think there's, a, I don't think there's an off switch for Brian Dayball and Sean McDermott. The only, well, the only thing that turns the switch off is if Sean McDermott believes his running game is more effective and it's five minutes left in the game, they're up by 17, and he says, end the game here. Let's run the thing, kill the clock, put this thing to bed, let's right. shorten the game. That's the only thing that gets in the way of Brian Dable, who I think is, is, is going to harbor some ill feelings about not getting a head coaching job, and I don't know that. I'm just saying, like, if that was me and I had the credentials that he had – and I didn't get a head coaching job, I'd be like, what the hell, man? What do it. you got to do? I get it. There's a lot so in there. So let me show you all over again. There's a lot in there. And there's a lot about Brian Dable, but Brian Dable's going to do what he's told when, when Sean said Absolutely. But I will say this. At some point, you're going to get, if you're running the ball and trying to run the clock out, at some point, you're going to get into third down. Yeah. And whether it's not third and two or whether it's third and 20, oh. you're going to try and pick it up. And – you don't even have to worry about we third saw down. Evidence, this team throws on first down. <laughs> we saw evidence of them shifting gears when they were up big in Denver, when they got snapped off a 51-yarder. We had signs of this when Matt Barkley was in the game week 17, and they were up 49 to 14. Keep on trucking. And they kept on trucking and threw the big one over the middle to Gabe Davis with Matt Barkley. You saw it in – and certainly you saw it against the division opponent in, in New England when they were winning – 31, 30, 32 to 9, and threw the one to the back of the end zone and go 39. I, I mean, th- so there's no difference there. So there, there's every reason to believe this is a team that's going to shift gears rather than just play well enough to win. And if that's the case, then Josh's numbers will reflect that. Yeah. If, let's just say, Allen hits those completion percentage marks we talked about with Feldman, what does it mean first – for how quarterbacks are judged going forward. Second, what does it mean for the fortunes of the Bills this season? It'll mean this. If, and I, I said this a, a long time ago. There was a year, five or six, seven years ago, where four quarterbacks threw for 5,000. Yeah. Now, Drew Brees has done it more than anybody. He threw for like, He's there were like four or five times. 12 so. seasons where a quarterback threw for 5,000. He had seven of them. Everybody else had one. Uh, and then there was that year where three or four guys did it, and Eli Manning was like 60 yards from it. So it was one of those years. I think if Josh does it and nobody else does, that's different. Hmm. They'll say that's an anomaly. But if Josh does it and there's three or four other guys that are right there with him, then it will change the bar for how quarterbacks are. It depends. If Josh is alone up there, then it's going to be one of those yeah. unicorn seasons. Uh, and but he's, And he's MVP. But you th- Yes, but you think about this, so Brownie. If Josh Allen completes 73.5% of his passes this year and throws for 5,300 yards and has never in his career taken a step backwards, what's it going to look like going into 2022? I mean, people will be – Crown him. Yeah. He'll be be on the front of Madden and – Yeah. Yeah, he'll have a 99 rating or whatever. And, yeah. 
Yeah. They'll be happy they got him to that extension <laughs> before this season, hopefully. With uh, this high rate of completion in mind, we spun it right into our numbers game this week, Steve. There have been just 11 quarterbacks in the history of the league who have completed 70% of their passes or more in a single season. And just so you know, they had to throw at least 224 pass attempts in a season to qualify. Steve, are you ready to try to name the 11 quarterbacks uh, in NFL history? Yes, I am ready. With a completion percentage of 70% or more in a single season. All right. Cue up the game music here. Let's see, here see what Steve go. can do here. I will begin with Drew Brees. Drew Brees is correct. In fact, he has seven of the 17 single season completion percentages of 70 or more, including the top one, 74.4%. That is otherworldly. Yeah. Uh, I The second guy I will say will be, well, be Brady. Believe it or not, Brady does not have a season in which he finished at above 70%. Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger not on this list. Now, I will tell you, Steve, wow. there are one, two, three, four quarterbacks that played in your era or earlier. Oh, really? On this list. Because remember... Only 224 pass attempts to oh, qualify. Oh, gosh, that's like three games. Or, sorry, completions to qualify. Not three games. It's like eight games now. Yeah. You? Okay. So there are a handful Let of them. Let me say this. I will go uh, Montana. Correct. 70.2%. I'll say Young. Steve Young is correct. 70.3%. They did it in 89 and 94, respectively. All right, so I got three of the, three of the 11. You got three. Uh, I just want you to try to get more than half here. Rivers. Uh, Philip Rivers is not on this list. Eli. No on Eli. Oh, how about Warren Moon? Not Warren Moon. Gah! Are they household names, tell me? Yes. All right. You would reg Well, there's one. Yeah. Ding dang it. There are one. Dan Fouts. Not Dan Fouts. One, two... I'm Three, trying to think of guys. Four. There are five more active quarterbacks on this list. High completion percentage. Come on. Russ? No. Wilson? No. Active quarterback. Come on. Think about some of the most accurate quarterbacks you can think of that are still playing right now. Mahomes? Not Mahomes. <sighs> accurate quarterback. Been in the news. Matt Ryan? Been in the news an awful lot through the course of the offseason. Oh, Aaron. Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> yeah. 70.7%. Uh, and what about uh, the other guy that I just said? There's another guy that's been in the news a lot this offseason who's also on this list. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson, 70.2%. All right, how many have I got? That is one, two, three, four, five. I don't know that you'll get the others. So just try Gardner to get... Gardner Minshew. Not You went with the Fu Man Minshew. I can't believe I didn't get that. One. Uh, I will give you the I others. You okay, make. so we'll start from the bottom. Seventy point one percent. Kirk Cousins did it with uh, the Vikings in twenty eighteen. We also have this one's going to shock you. Ryan Tannehill did it in twenty nineteen with the Titans. Then we have Sammy Baugh, who did it in nineteen forty five. Probably threw two hundred twenty five times. Right. Ken Anderson in 1982, which was a strike-shortened season. So right. put an asterisk there. And then in 2016, Sam Bradford. How about that? He probably played a shortened season due to injury. Yeah. <laughs> More than anything played else. Six games. But 11 quarterbacks in the history of the league have completed 70% or more in a single season. There are 17 total such seasons. Breeze has seven of them. I knew that, yeah. He's unbelievable. He's a phenomenal quarterback, yeah. And, and he, do, he doesn't, he's never gotten his his due. Be, well, he won one world championship. Yeah. And, uh, and got, you know, no called out of the other. But 
Yeah, he's he was a phenomenal yeah. player, and and it's amazing that when he moved from the San Diego Chargers at that time, when he became a free agent, because the Chargers, <laughs> and this is why I this is why I dog the Chargers. The Chargers were pretty sure he couldn't play. Well, apparently so were the Dolphins. Well, the Dolphins thought he was unhealthy. He, right. he wasn't going to pass the physical. Let, I, let me fix that. The Dolphins' doctors thought he was unhealthy and right. couldn't play. Right. And that prompted Nick Saban to leave the Dolphins and go back to college. Yeah. He I actually guess. admitted that recently. Yeah. I saw that. I was, and I'll tell you that, too. That, that it's interesting, too. Coaches around the league thought the guy could play, except for the guys in, in San Diego. And... <laughs> The guy goes on to another to at least another dozen years in the league, right? He was that was his yeah. fourth year. He's another dozen le- years in the league. Throws has seven seasons where he throws for five thousand plus. He's he's got seven seasons. Wins the world championship. Completion. Gets the NFC championship. He's in, he's in the mix all every year. And the San the San Diego Chargers were pretty sure he couldn't play. Yeah. Hey, you you win some, you lose some. You make the right call, I'll you make the wrong though. call. I'll say this, and I and I sat and talked with him way, way back, twenty years ago. First ballot guy, right? Yes. When I when I was sitting with him as a first year, second year player, he was not committed. Oh. He was not committed. He like was fully a, invested. He was he was he liked it. He was playing. He'd do what he did and stuff and all that. And he played a lot of golf and he he was just kind of like living he'd live in the live in the San Diego life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They drafted Philip Rivers. And then it got real. And he changed from one year to the next. It was unbelievable. He was unbelievably different after they drafted his replacement. Hmm. And the char- by that time the Chargers had moved on, obviously, because they drafted Philip Rivers. And Breeze saw that guy looking over. He's like, what are you, what? And then, from then on, he was a film junkie, a study junkie, a workout junkie, a gym rat, a school student of the game, and he becomes who he was. But you had, he, they had to get another number one yeah. to get it, to do I wonder that. if, uh, in his Hall of Fame speech, if he thanks the Chargers for lighting the fire under him to propel him to... Untold heights in the NFL. I don't know if he sees it the same way I do either. So I'm, <laughs> I may be, you know. But that's what I saw. I don't see it that way. That's Sorry, what I Steve. saw. Uh, training camp obviously underway, Steve, and we want to apply our question called, who will be first to Bill's camp? Okay, so first up, who will be first to win a starting job that's currently up for grabs? I will give you some names. You tell me who you like the best. Okay, right. you ready? Yep. Dane Jackson, Levi Wallace, Cody Ford, Ike Butker, Isaiah McKenzie, Marquez Stevenson. So we're obviously talking about CB2, left guard, and return man. Which guy do you like? Who will be first? Levi Wallace. I think Levi Wallace. Because? Be He's used to This is another day at the office. <laughs> been They've there, been, done they that. They have been trying to replace that guy for four years, and they can't get it done. Yeah. They brought him back. And he's on a he's on a one year deal with the Bills, and uh, I think Cody Ford. Uh, there's too big a question mark there for me. And Ike Butker, I don't. I think those Cody Ford and Ike Butker are in a a pool full of guys that can play guard. Right. There's a ton of guys in there, so I don't know if even those two, if it's either one of those guys that will emerge. Uh, so that's that. And then at the kickoff return guy. Well, you just picked the first guy. All I needed you to do was who will be first. Yeah. You said Levi Wallace is going to win Levi. his job before anybody else I on that Levi list. I think Levi Wallace will, will be the guy. I tend to agree with that. I would say 1A would probably be Isaiah McKenzie, provided he demonstrates ball security. That is first for Sean McDermott when it comes to return men. And provided he does that, I think they will put their trust in him to be their primary return man. Who will be first to pancake an opponent? In O-line, D-line, one-on-ones in camp, Steve. As we know, once the pads go on, we get those O-line, D-line, one-on-ones. Who right. will be first to pancake someone in this scenario? Don't give me a choice because I got it. Uh, John Feliciano. Feliciano with the first pancake, yes. you say. And a, probably also the first fight, I'll say. First fight. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't I'm, really fight, though, anymore. No, anymore. not so much. It's good for them. I'm going to go. <laughs> They're smarter than we were. 
I'm going to go with Deion Dawkins. I think he's going to pancake somebody. I don't know why. It's just the first name that popped into my head, so I'm just going to go with okay. it. Who will be first to sign a new contract? Josh Allen, Tremaine Edmonds, Stephon Diggs, Taron Johnson. Josh Allen. Okay. Josh Allen. I would tend to agree with that as well. I think we, even though they were downplaying the significance of getting it done before the season starts, I, I believe behind the scenes they are hard at work on that. Right. Who will be first to make an interception in the preseason? Tredavious White, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, Taron Johnson. I will say, since they're going to Detroit, Detroit's got Jared Goff. I will there will say, be an interception. I will say Taron Johnson, the slot guy. Dang, you took mine. I was going to yeah. take Taron Johnson. I don't think I don't think Jared Goff's going to have a chance to look outside. I think he's going to be yeah. waist deep in pass rush. Okay, next one. Who will be the first to throw a touchdown pass in the preseason? Allen Trubisky, Davis Webb, Jake Fromm. Mitch Trubisky. Mitchie Biscuits. Yes. Why? You just think he's going to get more playing yes, time? Yes, I don't think Josh is going to be out there. I think Josh will be out there long enough to hiccup and then get off. Especially in the first game, right? Like, Yeah, I think Trubisky's going to get some reps. Yeah, I think he's going to have an opportunity to really kind of showcase his advancement, particularly in this system. Particularly playing back against the NFC North. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this defense, <laughs> although it's different with new coaching again. Um, <laughs> but he knows the personnel. So, yeah, I, I think that will benefit him. That's a good uh, point that you made there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with uh, Mitch Trubisky as well. That was who will be the first, and that'll do it for this edition of One Bill's Light. We remind you to subscribe so you know when the next episode is released on whatever podcast platform you choose. You can also watch and listen to us on the Bill's YouTube channel. Thanks for listening, and remember, when there isn't enough time for our three-hour daily show, One Bill's Live, there is always enough time for One Bill's Life. For Steve Tasker, I'm Chris Brown. We'll see you next week, everybody.